Oh, shalom. Sukkot shalom. Nedasim al shalom. Nasalayat shalom. Hao. Hao. Oh, for Yah's protection, I and I pray for the I them, as we're in this uh, blood moon right here, the second of the blood moons right here, Sukkot, right, here's where we're at right now, this is this day, brothers and sisters, rejoice in the King of Kings and through Yeshua HaMoshiach, this is Sukkot right here, the blood moon sign, and they said in the, in the, in the, um, on the East Coast, they say we should be able to see it overnight. And, you know, at the beginning, at the end, you can see certain changes of uh, color, right? Um, a blessed B.I.N.I. Rastafari in this blood moon season. I want to share this revelation. Um, listen to this tune right here. Um, oh, what's the sister's name? I think it's Sister Cat. Right, Sister Cat, right here. I love this tune right here. So, here, love Sister Cat for I and I and I. Let's come again one more time. No, no. Yeah, I don't protection. No. Oh. oh, the virtuous woman, right? Yes, right here. We're going to touch on this right here, and this is the revelation that was shown to I, and I went into a fuller, a fuller treatment of it, right? A fuller treatment of this for the Sukkot, right? For the ingathering for tabernacles. This is the first, it's coming to the first light of tabernacles, and please stay tuned for the more in-depth uh teaching and preaching on Sukkot, right, Rastafari Sukkot, um, and we went into a little bit of the revelation there, and this is after that, and we're looking for this particular image right here to go into a, another part of, the, here we go, right here, okay, let's bring this open right here. Now, okay, it's going to come to the forward. Okay, here we go, Sukkot. Uh, here we go, right here. This. Okay, let's lift this up right here. Uh-huh. Uh, machine is we've been overworking this this technology right <laughs> been overworking it so it's a little bit slow right here to respond to all of i and i commands right and that happens so patience is a virtue so here we go we just want to share a little bit of that sister cat tune right there as uh i really love that tune the m.i.a tune right and we thought that there was a substance that actually shared with this right here, and that was that was from um, uh, Aya Branch. That was one of Aya Branch's selection right there. We're listening to in the background right here. So we wanted to go into Sukkot a little bit more, but what we want to connect right here is this uh, blood moon, right? I can get a wider shot right here of this blood moon, right? And let's see if we can bring this over on the side as well. Now, Sukkot, we looked at the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, right? And that's the reason right here, that's the reason for the season, Tabernacle and Tabernacle and Booths. And um, we also was reminded that that was uh, 
that was uh, one of the places that Israel was encamped before when he left Ramesses, right? And before their um, crossing the Red Sea. And that's, that's very, very interesting with the blood moon. So the blood moon, Sukkot, and crossing the Red Sea. So this is this revelation on top of revelation. And I and I give thanks and praise, right, for these revelations. So as we just go through this right here, because sometimes we will, you know, begin to, you know, begin to speak on these subject matters. And then after we say, oh, man, we should have recorded it. So in the process of getting set up, and setting up the teaching right here. We're actually recording on this. And so we're actually in the blood moon um, for this particular season. Now, why am I using this particular picture right here? Part of the reason is that some of the other images that we have, you know, uh, saved as teaching tools, we don't have access to it. And Instead of getting frustrated about that, his grace, he gave more grace and he started to reveal to I that you see this particular image right here. This image right here actually corresponds to Isaiah 1 and 8. And the word cottage that is found in the King James Version, we'll find cottage, that word cottage that is found in the King James Version in Isaiah the book of the prophet Isaiah chapter 1 and 8 where it says let's get the scripture right here it says and the daughter of Zion is left as a cottage as a sukkah right as a sukkah right now speaking of the daughter of Zion now when we're speaking of this is from um, the so called hut they say hut beta Israel but what they don't reveal to us is this idea of a hut based on this construction in the Hebrew is a sukkah. So we find that the Beta Israel of Ethiopia, right, truly are one of the remnant tribes that shows us much of pre-European Judaism in many of their types. Now these types are important for us in grace to understand as well. Now while we're putting the blood moon over here, because this is connected with the blood moon, right? The first day, this October 8th, right, is the first day of Sukkot, right? And Sukkot means tabernacles or booths, right? Tabernacles or booths. And it bespeaks of Ha Elohim, the Ab, the Abba and Father of our Black Lord and Savior, Yeshua HaMoshia, being our shelter and Yeshua, he saves, right? He is saving I and I, is the living, the living water, right? Yeshua is the light, the illumination of this world, of the world. Yeshua is preparing, right? I and I, the true home, I and I, true home in the king mind in the kingdom of the king of kings in Christ. So we use this right here. This is the image that we had got it in mind. And we said, let's recover this image right here and put out a word for this season, this time. And if we are to, you know, apologize to our brothers and sisters, um, it is that we probably did not hear him give this revelation before. But no doubt this is not a new revelation because this is already in his word. But sometimes we hear what we hear. You know what I mean? So I would have wanted to touch on this before because it's such a beautiful revelation that's unfolding concerning this blood moon and Sukkot, right? And the Holy Spirit directed our attention to the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary because as we teach, it's important the name. When it says, blessed be the Lord God, the Yahweh Elohim or Elohe Shem, Hashem, the Lord God of the name, right? Or the Lord God of Shem. Now Shem means the name, it means name. And Hashem means the name. Mm-hmm. Because we take refuge, we take covert and refuge in his name. Right? His name in spirit and in truth, that means in maturity, growing in grace, 
and in the knowledge of Yeshua HaMoshiach, his name is that place, right? That place in grace, right? That place which we have refuge, which we find refuge and shelter. Now, we're speaking spiritually, we're speaking metaphysically, right? But meta means above the physical, and the physical is the spiritual. As Yeshua HaMoshiach says that he is from above, right? So in our being born again, right, we have to enter into that upper room. This is why one of the teaching on Sukkot is that Sukkot is likened to Adonai's or Adoni's supper, his supper, that, that Passover supper where we sup with him. Right, and he speaks to something with him, and he speaks to the key. The key for we in something with him is in his word, right? Is in his from the Greek, we will say logos, right? The logos in supping with him in his word, right? If we sup with him in his word, right? The logos, the devar, the devar is that key. For we, the Devar is that key in the Hebrew, the Devar, right? And Devar, it's interesting how that connects with the name Deborah, right? Or Deborah, right? Deborah. Now, let's touch on the gospel, a couple of key verses from, that we find in the, in the gospels concerning supper and supping, right? If we sup with him, right? And to sup, right? How do we sup, right? How do we sup with him, right? If we sup in his word, right? It's his word that is the key, right? And there's much that is said in Revelation, Revelation 3 and 20 says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice, faith comes how? The imuna comes how? Faith comes by hearing and the hearing by the word of Ha Elohim, by the word of the Moshiach. He says of the Moshiach, this is my son, right? This is my beloved son, right? He says, this is my beloved son, hear ye him, right? This is my beloved son, hear ye him. Let me make a quick, a quick cut right here. If I can, I want to make a quick cut because I want to include this in the the visual setup right here, right? But this is the the whole reason, right, for the season. This is the center. This is the key, right? Yeshua is the key, right? And what he has fulfilled for we, we must sup on, right? We must ask him for wisdom. We must grow in his word, right? We must grow in the knowledge of the Moshiach. So what I'm trying to do right here, I'm trying to put this in tune with this right here and then put that on top of that right there, right? So it'll blend a little bit more right there. So you already know the Daspa of the, the cottage. We touched on that before. So the daughter of Zion, right? So the word says right here that the daughter of Zion, that the daughter, I want you to emphasize and pay attention to the daughter. It's not saying Zion, but the daughter, right? The daughter. So Zion gave birth and has a daughter, but she is left as a cottage or as a sukkah in a vineyard, in a vineyard, right? He says that my father is the husbandman, right? He is the true vine and the father is the husbandman. The one who tends to the vine. So now the daughter of Zion is left as a sukkah. Sukkah is a singular of what Sukkot is. Right? Sukkot is the plural of what sukkah is the singular of. Amen? Just to have that basic understanding. And it says, as a lodge, a maluna, in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. Now, the revelation that was shown to Iowa, we know about the Yom Kippur War, which was also occurred 
is it what, 67, 68, roughly around that time was another blood moon sign. It was a similar tetrad also occurred at that time, right? And we see what is going on in the world flesh and the diabolical nature of the God of this world, right? The God of this world is not our God. Let's, let's specify that. The God of this world is the God that has blinded ones to the gospel of his grace, right? But what about the daughter of Zion? The daughter of Zion, she is left as a what? As a sukkah in a vineyard. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to get into this a little bit more. And so I looked at the, I looked at the, 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 the Hebrew Right, the Hebrew right here. Let me show you the Hebrew right here. Hopefully we got light on this. Let's see if we have light on this. Here we go right here. Let's let's clear this up. All right, and you can see this right here. This is the Hebrew verse. Right, so you can see what we're going to read from and what we are sharing with you. And if you look into the Hebrew, you'll clearly see it says key. I think it's right here. Or k. Suka, right? Kusuka, right? Right there. That's the word right there. Kusuka, right? And we touched on that in the more expanded, right? In the more expanded, we, 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 we went into a little bit more of the detail, right? A little bit more of the detail, right? On that right there. So the daughter of Zion. Now, what I find to be extremely interesting is, of course, the connection right, with the blood moon sign, right, this blood moon sign that is going on, as well as defining and getting an identity, right, identifying, well, who is this daughter of Zion? And the Holy Spirit shows me that there is a at home and an abroad application, right, and a home and abroad application to, well, who is this daughter of Zion, right? We have the daughter of Zion. We have our our Ethiopian Hebrew, our black Hebrew peoples in the state of Israel and Jezreel, where all that, that particular region where so much attention, right? Rightly, but still a lot of attention has been focused on that particular region of the world, right? So we have our black Hebrew people in what's known as the state of Israel, right? Or old Israel, right? Old Israel. And then we also are of that daughter of Zion, right? That daughter of Zion Commonwealth. So we share within that daughter of the Zion Commonwealth. Okay, here we go. This kind of brings it a little bit tighter as the vision that we want to show you. We want to show you Okay, Sukkot right here. Wanted to show you the blood moons. This is where we're at right here, right? 10, 8, October 8th, 2014. This is the verse that we want to highlight on. This is a, a word pick for that, right? That word pick for the daughter of Zion. The daughter of Zion is as a Sukkah, right? As a Sukkah, right? In a vineyard. Right in a vineyard, as a lodge in a besieged, in a, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city, right? As a besieged city, right? As a besieged city. So, does this give us a? I'm not gonna say a portent, but could this be be speaking of that which might be revealed in this season? if we would judge all of the previous times that there has been a blood moon sign is always significant for Israel, right? Both real Israel, right? Speaking of the ethnic, the blood Israel, as well as those who are in some level of a Israelitish consciousness, right? And the converts to Israel, or concerning the Jews who call themselves Jews, because I think that what they did is by the Almighty's will, right? Is by the Almighty's will for his seed people, right? So we can see a type, 
right? In other words, the same ones that in, in previous times tore down now will be used by the Almighty to prepare for his people, right? To prepare for his people whom we are. So here, let's get into this verse right here, as I showed you from Isaiah, Yeshayahu. And the footer of this verse, right? The footer of this verse, because in the Hebrew it says that here, in the Hebrew that we showed you says, and the daughter of Zion is left as a booth, a sukkah, ki sukkah in a vineyard, as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers, as a besieged city. That's the part that really zooms out at me. As a what? As a besieged city. So if we look at Jerusalem, old Jerusalem over there, it's a besieged city. But then if we look at the Hadestitutu, Jerusalem, right? Or at Ethiopia, right? At Ethiopia, according to prophecy, the children of the Ethiopians, they are also besieged. So we see Amos 9 and 7, both having a resonance right both in the way that we can say that well israel true israel according to its human humanity you could say nay been speaking for a moment let's just take a little sip here it's black right as well as the so-called political or the temporal situation of of ethiopia is likened to israel surrounded by enemies on many sides. This is why we've been calling for the repentance is so very much key so that he is on our side because we have turned to him. Right? We have repented to him. So the besieged city part is the part that has been has been ringing out in this particular verse at this particular time. Now in getting to a little more detail the daughter of Zion is called Bat, right? Bath or Bat Zion, right? Construction of opposition, meaning the daughter, the daughter Zion, the daughter Zion. And the Jews say that's a personification of Jerusalem. But we say, right? Rastafari Rebbe says this, this regards Ethiopia, right? This regards holy Ethiopia and that remnant. Right, that remnant of the faithful, right, the, the true church in the professing church, right, is left. She's isolated. She's forlorn in the midst of a conquered and a devastated country. That definitely applies to Ethiopia, right? So the likeness of the children of the, the revelation of the revelation to the children of Ethiopia, of the Ethiopians. And the children of Israel at this time of Sukkot and the blood moon sign, right? She is left, right? She has been left as a conquered in a in a conquered in the midst of a conquered and a devastated country. But this also speaks to us as the remnant in the West. We as that remnant in the West are also in the midst of a devastated, right? A conquered. And a devastated country. America is conquered. Right? America has been devastated. Some of y'all might not see it because you're still watching the mass media and the lamestream media. And they're making it seem like everything is just going on as it always did. Look forward to the sports, news, and weather. Right? But the real sign of the time is in the heavens. But people are looking at the false stars, the fallen stars on earth. And not recognizing both the sign and what divine time we are in. Because they have not turned to the Torah, right? To the law and to the testimony. The testimony of Yeshua. The testimony of Jesus, right? And what does the word say concerning the testimony of Jesus? If we turn to the scripture and we look up the testimony of Jesus, right? Or of Jesus, right? Of Jesus, or you say Jesus, but we don't have there's no Z there, so we're not in that spirit. We look at what it says in Revelation, Revelation 19. Um, actually, Revelation has a lot to say about the testimony of Yeshua. 
right? There's at least four places. There's a testimony of Yeshua. There's one place in one and two. It says, who bear record of the word of Elohim and of the testimony of Jesus Christ, of Yeshua HaMoshiach, and of all things that he saw. Then we have in Revelation 1 and 9, John the Revelator says, I, Johannes, the grace of Yah, the grace of God, if you please, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom, in the Malkut, the Mengis, and patience of Yeshua HaMoshiach, was in the Isle that is called Patmos, for the word of Elohim. So he was where he was at for what purpose? What is the cause or the because for the word of Elohim? Ha Elohim. And for the testimony of Yeshua Ha Moshiach. So when we say to the law and to the testimony, we're speaking of Torah and the testimony of our black Lord and Savior, Yeshua Ha Moshiach. So as long as she, the daughter of Zion, keeps her eye on he, on her husband, as long as our soul keeps her eyes on the object of her faith, her imuna on the amen, I and I imuna on the amen, our subjective faith on the object of our faith, who is the amen, amen. So here in Revelation 12 and 17, it says this, that the dragon, right, the dragon, the zendo, the dragon was wroth, right, the wroth, like they said, the wroth child was an angry child, the dragon was wroth with the woman, and went to make what? War with the remnant of her seed. That explains why the daughter of Sion, the daughter of Zion, is in a, what does the word say in Isaiah right here? As a besieged city. She is left as a besieged city. There's three points to this. One, she's as a sukkah in a vineyard. Two, she's as a lodge in a garden of cucumbers. Three, she's as a besieged city. Turgum in the Turguamehu, she's isolated. She is forlorn in the midst of a conquered and a devastated country. So we see this is true for Israel and the remnant at home and abroad. We see this is true for our black Hebrew or Ethiopian Hebrew, the Beta Israel that they airlifted in Ethiopia. They, uh, from, from Ethiopia to to the seacoast or to Jezreel called Israel, she is isolated in the midst of a conquered and a devastated country. Believe it or not, it's conquered, it's devastated. Let's look at Ethiopia, Amos 9 and 7. Are you not as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Look at the map. She is like an island right, of Christianity. This is an island of Judah, true Judah. Ish, the true Judah Ish, tribe of Judah, Moab and Bethesda in the Geta Yehuda, in the midst of enemies, Mohammedan enemies all around, heathen and pagan enemies all around, right? And they have come in and they have devastated the country. They have devastated our Judeo Christian foundations. They have brought the image that causes jealousy in the midst. Caesar Bogiers, Lucretia Bogiers, these whitewashed and heathen and pagan and diabolical images. And our people are so blind, deaf, and dumb. When we tell them about it, they can't hear. They don't see nothing wrong with it yet because we have to pray that Yeshua has mercy on them and that Abba Father gives them repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth. And we too, over in here in the West, in Babylon, we are in the midst of a conquered and a devastated country. It is conquered. You don't see it because they're keeping up the illusion until they get everything in place. But we have to rise 
in his grace. Amen. So here in Revelation 12 and 17, this is the sign of the time that the dragon was wroth with the woman. That woman, when you see woman in the scripture, in a New Testament sense, it represents a church. It represents a called out assembly, right? Those who are called out of the Babylonianism and counterfeit and false religion that come in Yeshua or Jesus name, right? They, they come in his name and they say they are Christ. They are Christian. But if we check them out according to the word of Ha Elohim, we do not find the law and the testimony in them. So to the Torah and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there's no light in them. Therefore, there's darkness in them. So we turn away from them and we turn to the light of the King of Kings in the Moshea, right? In spirit and in truth and in his word and in his reality. So the dragon is angry, right? With the church of the firstborn and went to make war with the remnant, with the kereta, with the remnant of her seed. Notice what it says, her seed. You can connect that with Genesis. Genesis speaks about the enmity, right? The seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. Now in Revelation, so in the beginning, right? He's showed us the end from the beginning, right? So from the beginning, we can see how it ends right here. That the dragon comes to make war and is making war with I and I, the remnant of the black Israel and beta Israel at home and abroad, because we are that remnant of her seed, which keep the commandment of Ha Elohim, which is the Torah, which is the law, to the law and to the testimony. Don't you read that there in Isaiah chapter one, I mean, chapter eight, verse 20? Chapter 8, verse 20 of Isaiah, to the law and to the testimony. So we know what the law is, the Torah is, but what is the testimony? Let's read on. Revelation 12 and 17. It says, and have. We have to ask, so do we have? Do I have the testimony of Jesus Christos? You must ask yourself, do I have the testimony of Yeshua HaMoshiach? Do I keep the commandment of Ha Elohim? And this is why he says a commandment. He has given us not a new commandment, but it says a new commandment he has given us because many have not known it as they should have known it, right? But now we can know it. And that is what transforms our heart and our mind, right? That is what brings us to that birth and that rebirth that regeneration so we can follow the son of man right in his regeneration right as we have in matthew chapter 19 verses 28 to 29 amen now the last verse that speaks on the testimony of yeshua the testimony of yeshua the testimony of yeshua is in Revelation 19, 10. It says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said to me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren, the Wendemoch, the brethren that have the testimony. The brethren are those who have the testimony of Yeshua. Worship Ha Elohim. We worship his father as our father, his Elohim as our Elohim. Amen. For the testimony of Yeshua, for the testimony of Jesus, of Jesus, is the spirit, the Ruach of prophecy. For the testimony of Yeshua is the spirit, the Ruach of prophecy so that's the key for we is the testimony of yeshua is the spirit of prophecy so what can we see a prophecy in these four blood moons in this tetrad 
Can we see how that connects with the state of the daughter of Zion? Right? The daughter of Zion who eyes, right? Who eyes are on the bridegroom. Yeshua is the bridegroom for I and I souls, for I and I nephesh, for I and I nephs. Amen. Amen.